Welcome, everybody, to the Awake and Sober Podcast, a podcast about life and recovery through Christ. Not as big that time, but no. still a little emphasis. Yeah. He did it as usual. <laughs> <laughs> At least he loves him some Jesus. I do yeah. love me some Jesus. Yes. Today we'll be talking about step three. Ooh, yeah. Making that decision to turn our lives and our wills. Our will in our lives. We'll talk about that later. It's semantics. Yeah. <laughs> semantics. Yeah. Yes. So, Michael, how's your soul, sir? My soul is coming to peace. Um, the, the support system that I have around me is unlike any other that I've ever had in my life before. Um, we had some good conversations this week. And the more and more I think about it, the more and more I realize that it nothing was ever done out of a place of love and I am forever grateful. And I am, I am more grateful every day because in my old life of use and uh, abuse and misuse, nothing like that would have ever happened. And I would have continued the same behaviors that I was before. Um, but now that I have the, the men in my life who can call me out, make me accountable um, who I respect that makes, that just makes me a better person. Um, a better, uh, a better man. And that brings my soul to peace because I do have those people. I have you guys in my life and, um, I just feel, I feel I feel good. The last 36 to 48 hours are really uncomfortable, but you know, I say it all the time it, it, without strife or without uncomfortability, there is no growth. And I feel like, um, I got a fresh start and it's, it's, it's amazing to have that and to recognize it. And I, and I, and I'm, I'm feeling good. Life is good. Good. Life is good. Life is good. Shane. It is still well with my soul. <laughs> It is well with my soul. And I, I want to sing it every time, too. I just I don't want to lose any listeners. I'm singing. <laughs> it is well. Yeah, I mean, um, no, nah, things are really going good. Um, we launch on March 5th, so it'll be right after this comes out. Um, celebrate recovery. We'll have our celebrate recovery up and going. Uh, Christina and I are sharing our couple's testimony, so it's too late if you're waiting for this podcast, unless I drop it on Tuesday morning. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the only way. Uh, but I mean, every week at Celebrate Recovery, it's going to be a, a good time anyway. And um, so we're just excited. Um, created something for Christina on on the video that I'm going to play for the song that's in the middle of our testimony. Uh, so that way she could, she'll get a good little surprise out of it. Oh, good. That's what's fun about being an editor now, I guess. You, you like doing that kind of stuff, though. Surprises. Surprising her, yes. Yes. But I don't like editing, but I've had a yes. lot of fun with it. <laughs> I have learned, but yeah, I mean, things are going good. We're going to hopefully put the rest of the stall doors or the petitions up in the bathrooms and then we're pretty much done. Stall doors. <laughs> stall doors. Yeah. Um, it's like lead a bunch of horse in there. That, <laughs> right. uh, yeah. yeah, we do CR in a barn. <laughs> yeah. <You> gotta, <laughs> so don't worry, folks. Come on, come all. Yeah. <laughs> the other bathrooms are open and, and there's partitions everywhere. The doors are on there, but the new part, the expansion part, um, we're finishing that up. We had to hang 300 pound doors, you know, the fire doors. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. I never realized how heavy a door was until that. Yeah. Oh yeah. So mm -hmm. safety yeah. first. It's been, uh, it's been well. How are you or how is it with your soul, big germ? It's, uh, it's going good. Um, I don't know where my voice went up there. Yeah, but it did. Uh, <laughs> Thinking of Amy. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, like, yeah, I like Mike have, uh, have done a lot of self-reflection, uh, over the last, uh, several days. And so, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know how else to say it other than I'm good. I'm content. Good. I like content. Yeah. I'm glad you're not saying fine. It would no, because we, you know what I mean? Out insecure, yeah. neurotic yeah. and emotional. Yeah. 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 And it's like, ah, but really, how you know? Yeah. No. So yeah. That would uh, describe those right people on. that usually say fine though. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Yes. I, I am one of them. I said it many times and I'm looking forward to Tuesday night. Cause, uh, after talking with Christina today, I think I'm going to start doing that, uh, every Tuesday moving forward, at least for a little while. Yeah. See how it goes. Come and visit. <clears throat> it's a blast. Um, I just looking forward to getting up there to a new one and, and sharing our testimony. I, you don't get to hear couples testimonies often. Yeah. And so when, when we could do it, it's, it's a lot of fun. 
It really is. Yeah. So what's step three say? Do we want to give a shout out to anybody? Oh, you mean Derek, since he's not here? Well, Derek, yes. Yeah, that poor guy. He he went into the office. I really thought he'd be working from home and being able to come over and join us. But Derek, hi, we miss you. We love you. We don't get to see the gangster lean across from me. Yeah, we don't have chuckles here today. Chuckle. Yeah, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> Amy. I got my turtles. I got my turtles. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess a good shout out to Amy. I said it just a little while ago. Happy birthday, yeah, Amy. The, yes, happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday to my bride. So good breakfast this morning. I, the kids have been asking what we're going to do for a birthday tonight. And I said, you need to make that decision. I don't like making decisions. Okay, then well, we're going to have pulled pork tonight. Yeah. No, I don't want pulled pork. Okay, oh, well, that, gonna, yeah. Yeah, see, yeah. So you do care what we're going to have for mm-hmm. dinner tonight. So you yeah. should just say, if they don't, when they say, I don't like making decisions, you should just say, grow up. <laughs> <laughs> just watch what you ask for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. just watch what you ask All right, for. we're going to have, uh, what's that cold soup? Um, what is, oh, uh, leftovers, <laughs> <laughs> gazpacho, gazpacho, that's what it is. That's oh, what gazpacho. I was looking for. I could go leftovers. Some, I don't know why it's ceviche, <laughs> ceviche, like with shrimp and all oh, yeah. that. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. It's pretty good right now. It's some tortillas. I did soup and salad at Olive Garden the other night. Did you? What's yeah. an Olive Garden? Olive Garden. <laughs> I couldn't get it out. <laughs> Derek's not here. Yeah, so somebody's somebody's, somebody's going to talk. Yeah. A little somebody's laugh. got to have the speech impediment. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> We're all guilty. Yeah. And uh, do we want to give a shout out to Tactile Turn? Tactile Turn. Always. Will last week. That was awesome. Yeah. What a great time. He just got a great heart. Yes, he does. But we do need to go down there and go visit him. Yeah. I Find think, a way uh, to get down there. Uh, but Tactile Turn, yes. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Will, thank you for being on the show. Um, now I just got to reach out and make sure he's okay that I posted the social media. I don't see why he wouldn't. Because putting it in... Uh, the tactile turn fan page would be a lot of fun. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. You might need to get his permission on that one. Yeah. yeah. That's what, yeah. <laughs> yep. That's what <laughs> that's I said. Next step. <laughs> Bunny bread. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, all right. So step three is made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. If you work in an AA program or NA, and it is. Turn our wills, our turn our lives and our wills over to the care of God, Jesus and celebrate recovery. Correct. Okay. What do you got, Mike? Um, how long you got? No. Um, oh, therapy session. Yeah. <laughs> I thought uh, you just had one. I just had one. Yeah, no, no, I'm good. I'm, yeah. I'm fine. I promise. No. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so we, you know, and, and I love that we are doing this, like the series, you know, steps, uh, one through 12, once a month. And, um, we, st- we, when we started off, it was, I can't, he, he can, I think I'll let him. Or there was, there was another one I think you might have said before, too. Or Jeremy. I'm not God. There, 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 I need... I, um, I'm not God. There is a God. I need God. I need God. Yeah, right. Um, so for me, like the first, uh, the first couple of steps went by really, really quick. You know, um, admitting that I was powerless. Um admitting that there was something greater. And then finally that decision to turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understood him. Um, when I first got into recovery, I was more agnostic. Now I am more, um, uh, Christian faith-based. Um, and when I started off, you know, my God, I used the, the acronym was good orderly direction or, you know, group of drunks. Um, and, that's how I perceived it. And, and, and I love that it says, as we understood him, um, because it's very subjective of who you want to turn your, your will in your life or your life and your will over to, um, depending on what, you know, uh, program you are working, right? Yeah. Celebrate. You're going to turn it over to Jesus Christ. We understand that. Right? Not, not everybody, but not um, every, yeah, because right? we, we do have people that are not Christ followers mm-hmm. come to celebrate recovery. And it's, that's who you want there. You want people that are on the fence or you want non-believers to be at your celebrate recovery. Yeah. Because the purpose is to bring people to Christ. But yes, ours is. <laughs> That's Christ calling. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> is that you? Help. <laughs> oh, please leave that. Wah. 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 Yeah, I'd have to find that one. <laughs> I mean, I have it loaded on a computer, so I guess I can leave it. And... Oh, that 
Just go old. Just know that God called again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's always listening. That was great. He's always listening. Always. So you, always, so you want, so you want those people on the fence. You and, do, and that's, and that's where I was. You know, I was, I was really on the fence. Like uh, growing up, uh, um, Catholic, and you know, having that all that, you know, that, uh, it just pushed and punched into your brain. You know, um, me being who I am, I was going to revolt, and I was going to say, no, I'm not going to believe something just because you say so, right? Um, but as I got into recovery and as I got a little bit of sobriety under my belt, I started to hear God speak through other people and I started to get really reconnected with my faith. And it was cool because it's like, you know, we, we always think we have kind of control over our lives and whatnot. And when I, when I saw that step, I was like, okay, it's cool. I have a little bit of control over who I turn my life over to. And it was nice to hear God speak through other people. Because I could say, bam, that's God. That is God speaking to me right there. And it just kind of opened that door a little bit more and yeah. more, you know, as, as the more I moved on. So um, more comfortable than ever with my faith and with, and with this step than, I, than I've ever been before. So, yeah, And for us, it's about loving people well, right? Always. Um, if we love them well, it's our job to love. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict, right? And so if we could provide a place to where even non-believers feel welcome, mm -hmm. then yeah, we're doing it right. We're loving them well. And the Holy Spirit to get a hold of them. Yeah. They'll drink the Kool-Aid. Oh yeah. There oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to, I kind of want to talk about that stigma too of those, of, of <clears throat> working a program because a lot like me, I was like, I'm not doing anything with God. And are you kidding me? No, there's no way. Jeremy, did you experience anything like that? I mean, I know that you, you know, you were, you've always been kind of faith-based and, you know, and you've always been um, really deep into your faith, but maybe hearing from other people, what was that kind of like when people would say, you know, I'm not going to do that because I don't, I'm not a believer. Or I, I don't want to give that over. My first knee jerk reaction is to snow globe them. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I just did. For those that don't know what that is, it's shaking. I'm really yeah. good. <laughs> What'd you do? So <laughs> Grab them by the head and do that. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> You know, my question is always to those guys is, is would you rather go your whole life believing in something and finding out it's true or not believing in something and finding out it's true? Yeah. And, and to me, it's, it's kind of like you, I, I have to, I have to realize that everybody's journey is not like mine and that's hard. New in recovery, especially it's, I can't make you do anything. This is, it is the plan, but it is your recovery. Mm -hmm. Right. It is the 12 steps. It's not like I can take this and do, you know, move this around. That is the plan. That is the program for living, right? Whether it be CRAA, whatever it is, that's the program for living, but how I apply it to my life, you know, and we three have had this discussion recently is what are you doing for your recovery? What have you been doing for your recovery? But I have to do step one and realize I am powerless. That's why it's so important to break these down, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, Realizing I'm powerless, I'm unmanageable, and recognizing my need for a higher power, my need for a savior, um, because I don't, I don't just want to think that nothing's going to happen, you know, or, or that I'm, <clears throat> I'm in control of everything because I've realized, I hate to say this, I couldn't manage my way out of a paper bag. <laughs> wet paper bag. A wet yeah. paper bag. A wet paper yeah, bag. Yeah, I just, I could. Sticky. Yeah. Um, so I think the concept, you just have to be, I tell guys all the time, you just have to be willing and open to the idea of something that's bigger than you. But that's in the beginning. Because when you make it to the third step, I mean, you're not going any further on the steps, truly going any further until you accept, until you will admit that there's a God of your understanding whatever that may be. But how do we get past the third step if we don't do that? You don't. Right. I mean, I've seen people try to write. You're not doing it properly. I've seen people try to write on a four step, but it, right. it went nowhere. Right. So you, you, you're you going to go no further than a third step in, in a 12 step program if you don't find uh, something greater than yourself. And I agree. I don't care where it starts. I just want it to always be Jesus in the end. Right. Um, but wherever it starts, it starts. Mm -hmm. and I, <clears throat> excuse me. I say it like this is my, is my current 
concept of a higher power working my need to change. So is your concept of the higher power working towards the need to change? And I think that's what the step three is. And so instead of saying, okay, how am I going to get through this? It's like, okay, what is my concept of the higher power and how is it working in my favor? If that's what you need to do or how is it going to work in my favor? Jesus does great. I know this. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, we, that's great. We can all agree on that. Um, and, and that's where that, you know, that as you understood him, it comes in. It's, and, and I love that too. It's like, when I, when I talk to new people in recovery, it's like, I don't care what you want to make your higher power. You know, do, do I want it to be Jesus? I mean, yeah, Mountain Dew for Shane, because you know, <laughs> over here that's just why Jesus was, it too later. That's why Jesus was calling him earlier, like, hey, dude, yeah. Mountain Dew's kind of... <laughs> Maybe cut it back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he would say that. <laughs> uh, Jesus loves me. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible told me so. The Bible. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's... My, my thing is, I don't care what you believe in. I, I believe that you believe, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. I do what do I do? I want you to uh, you know ultimately get to Jesus Christ. Of course I do, but holding that door open, just like you said, leaving that being open minded to just let something in, no matter what it may be, that is greater than yourself. You know, and you hear a lot of like, oh, that you know that uh, that that doorknob could be your higher power. I don't. Yeah, it has yeah. a purpose, and I oh, I hated that. I always hate that. I can replace that doorknob. Yeah, I'll break that doorknob and I'll replace yeah. it with another doorknob. Yeah, and then that's that means my concept of a higher power is constantly changing. In a, in a like, no. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah, you can be. I mean, I believe you can be flu like mine. My, I was fluid in my higher power. You know, it's grown, but it was always. It's always something greater than myself because I know that I do not have the power to do this on my own, mm -hmm. you know? So I like to keep that kind of be open-minded with people as they are continuing to open their mind as well. You know, I don't, I'm not going to say this is the way and this is the only way, but I want you to keep that open mind to be able to kind of figure it out for yourself, but I will help guide you, you know? And so you dealing with with men on a daily basis that struggle with spirituality and faith it's like the question and i wrote this down was is how might your life be changed if you made the decision to turn it over because how, how well was your life working before right so so how do you think your life will be changed if you turn it over i don't know and i'm scared to find out so you're going to continue to live the way you're living right because it's comfortable. That's why the snow globe works well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's always it. Yeah. We're, we're fearful of the unknown. Mm -hmm. And, but what if God isn't real? But what if it is? To your point earlier is, look, just turn it over. Something's got to be greater than you anyway. Mm -hmm. Everything has a creator. So are we the only ones that don't have a creator? Excuse me. No. <laughs> Right, are we the, the human pastrami. beings? Are yeah. The only ones without a creator. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. we create everything. No. Yeah. No. Right. Yeah. And we definitely didn't come from anything else. Yeah. Another question: and is, We just stop evolving. That's that, that's another. Yeah, that's, we're a, done. that's a whole other podcast. We're, we're, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like okay, we're here, and that's oh, it. That's it. Yeah. 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 No, and that's for sixty million years. You guys <laughs> right. have been the same. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So how do I know who or what my higher power is? Open the Bible. Okay, Shane, what do you tell somebody who comes in and does not believe? So how, hey, Shane, how, how do I know who my higher power is? I don't believe that, in this whole God thing. That person on the fence. How do you steer them in that direction? Oh, man, I just had this conversation on, on Tuesday night with somebody that's sitting on a fence. And um, I tell them they will figure it out as they go, but something has to be greater than you. The whole thing is, is they, they need somebody to walk a journey with them, right? They need somebody to speak truth. Um, if they're willing to open up a Bible, man, we'll start in the New Testament, never start them in the Old Testament. No. But, I mean, we'll start them in the New Testament, in the Gospels, and have them start reading there. This guy's angry. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> start them in the Old Testament. <laughs> Just don't start them in. around in a desert for 40 yeah. years? He's kind of vindictive, isn't he? <laughs> don't, don't start them in numbers. <laughs> don't start, yes. Um, yeah, just certain places you don't, you don't start people, but, but a lot of it is just loving them where they are. 
yeah. and explaining what, once you explain your story to them, they could see God throughout it. At least I hope they can. Um, and so when they see God's grace throughout your story, as you're sharing it, they want some of that. And they're like, I could see God. And so that's what moves them towards it more. It's not beating it down, uh, down their throat. It's not hitting them over the head with the Bible, even though it is fun to do. It's just loving them where they are and sharing your story with them. And they're going to see Jesus through it. Yeah, I agree. And that's where I found it was other people's stories. You know, that's where it really changed for me was one understanding that I wasn't alone, you know, cause that was the big, that was the big thing for me to, the big hurdle for me to jump was I felt alone. And then when I realized I wasn't alone, um, hearing other people's experiences with the exact same thing I was going through helped maintain my open mind and really taught me how to be honest with myself for the first time, you know? So hearing it through other people, that was God talking. One of the greatest things that I've seen work is uh, telling them it's okay to be where you are right now. Mm -hmm. We love you anyway. We want you here. And a lot of times when somebody walks into a church, they don't have that kind of welcome, I guess you'd say. But when you tell them, hey, I don't care where you are right now. I'd love for you to be here, but you're not. And that's okay. Just we have to figure out what is greater than you that you could put your hope and trust in right this minute. Mm -hmm. And once you say that to them, I think it almost pushes them off the fence a little bit more because they're just not used to it. Like it's Jesus is the only way. Well, it is the only way, but how do we get them there? Yeah. Because yeah. that's not going to work. Because people want to make that own decision for themselves. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to go off like me. I did, when, like growing up, I, I didn't want, I didn't understand blind faith. You know, I just didn't get it. It did not click. And then I, it's not, to me, it's not blind faith anymore. It is having faith in, in other people, but also having faith that they relied on something greater than themselves. And that makes it okay for me to do that as well. You know, and it's not getting beat into my face. It's this worked for me. Yeah. Jesus Christ worked for me. He can also work for you. So Tuesday night I had a conversation with this person, right? They come up and they say, so how do I know if I'm hearing from God? Um, and You're so here. we started talking through it. <laughs> right. You're here. You showed up. <laughs> yeah. So we, we started talking through some of that. And she's like, you know, I've been looking for something out there. I've looked in turret cards. I've looked in um, all these other places, right? And, and most of them are, are places that you definitely should never look. Um, we don't want to let evil in. Um, but that's what she was doing because she went through a traumatic experience, a very traumatic experience when losing her husband. She thought she was going to die. And so as we're talking through these things and, and we're walking her through, this is what God, this is usually how God speaks to people, right? Not an audible tone, but through people and, and other ways and messages that, that we receive from, from folks. And as we're talking through these things, she's like, oh, you mean like this? You mean like this? Mm -hmm. And it was so neat to see those, that light bulb come on. Mm -hmm. Now this person says they're on the fence, but yet that night they ended up praying their group out. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Love them, guide them. But when somebody says, I, I don't know if I believe and then praise their group out for the evening. Right. I would say you believe a little bit more than you know. That's where that guidance comes in so handy. Cause it's like, you do, you believe in something, but you're not exactly sure what it may be, mm -hmm. you know? And for just that, that, to have that, you know, simplified and have simplification and all of it, like there is something greater than yourself. And I know that, you know, this, you just maybe don't recognize it. That's beautiful. That's awesome. I mean, that's. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's fun. It, it's one of the great joys of what we get to do. And to me, it's if somebody walks into Celebrate Recovery or somebody walks into a, a, they're obviously looking for something. Yeah. And so that's that, that willingness right then and there that they, that's all it's going to take. Right. Can you, uh, not to side, I'm not really sidetracking, but can you get to step three without doing an understanding step one, Shane? No. No, because we played God our entire lives. There's no way to, to say that I'm not God, that I'm powerless over these things if I don't admit to that. I don't know how you would get there without doing it. 
at least for an alcoholic or a drug addict. I, I, I mean, maybe a normie, mm-hmm. but I, I don't see how. I don't see how one and two, I mean, look, we've said it before, Dr. Bob and Bill W. were gifted by God for sure to put everything in the order that they put things in. Yeah. How do you get there without the first two? Mm. I also like what you said is, is God talks through people. And there's that, that, that story of the guy in the flood and, and, and <laughs> the, the, there's a flood coming and he doesn't want to leave his house. Yeah. And, and so the fire department comes by and says, Hey man, you need to get out of here. He's like, no, no, I'm good. And the water starts to creep up. So this guy comes on a boat. He's like, Hey, you know, we're, we're coming to get you. He's like, no, God's got me. God's got me. And then he's up on the roof because the water's risen that high. And then a helicopter comes and says, get on. You know, he's like, no, God's got me. And then he ends up dying. And God's like, he, he's at the pearly gates and God goes, the guy asked God why he didn't, yeah, why, why didn't, didn't you save me? And he yeah. goes, well, I sent a, I sent fire fire truck. Truck, a boat and a helicopter. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's understanding that grace that comes and seeing it when it does happen. Yeah. You know, and our own self will, I believe gets in the way. Yeah. Is yeah. that, you know, we, we want to see things through our own perspective and our own um, understanding that, like me, I needed to be guided to see it through other people's understanding so I can understand it better myself because my own self will would not allow me to see the, see the, the gifts that I was being given, you know, yeah. and I was taking all those things for granted. And I think we just, we don't know what to look for. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's like miracles. People say, well, miracles don't really happen anymore. Yeah, they do. They happen every day. Yes. They do. But we're looking for this and we think it should look like this whatever that is and it don't it don't look like that we're listening we think we're listening for god but no we're listening for what we think god is going to sound like i like that you know um god to me did one huge thing you know spoke loudly once and that's when creation happened um he spoke and to me that that's that big boom theory that people think about God spoke and it happened, right? Everything after that has been gentle whispers. Mm. And we don't listen for that. We don't, we don't pay attention that the text message that just happened to come in before we go and drive our car off a cliff is I think the God flood, talking to us. I, I think the flood was pretty loud. <laughs> yeah. That was a resounding message. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, there's water. <laughs> Lots yeah, of it. <laughs> but I'm talking about when God. Yeah, no, I don't. So when you send Elijah out on the mountain to go lis- uh, listen for God and it's not in the wind, it's not in the fire, it's not in the, the earthquake. Mm. It's in a gentle whisper. You know, it, it's in that, that little gentle breeze. God uses weird ways to speak to us. Mm. You know, and, and it's that text message you quit you, that you get before you quit ministry. It's, it's um, the text message that you get because you're about to eat a bullet. Mm-hmm. And the way that people show up, the way that God sends people to you to speak to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been there. Right. <laughs> Mike, were you going to say something? No. Okay. Um, I already asked that. Are you willing, or were you willing to do things in your recovery that were being suggested at the beginning, Mike? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no uh, <laughs> I'm arguing with you because he has that question on the answer. You didn't think that you needed to work a program, correct? Right. Yeah. Yeah. At the very beginning, I didn't um, until, um, and I've said this many times until like, you know, day 40 to 45, um, that, that powerlessness of like, okay, I can't do this on my own. That hit me like a bag of rocks, you know? And once I finally made that decision to start taking suggestions, you know, and I thought I was taking suggestions like when I was in treatment and I was, you know, doing all the groups and I was going to everything and I was working on my, on my character defects and whatnot. And then I got out and I was like, man, what do I do now? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I am lost. And then I was by a former colleague of ours. I was like, he's like, maybe you should try this, you know, just give it a whirl. What's it going to hurt? And then once I took that suggestion, I started taking another suggestion and then I started taking another suggestion, but I was seeing those promises that we talk about pay off. 
You know, Mm -hmm. I was seeing those good things happen. Those God whispers or God winks that we talk about, you know, I saw more and more of them happen. And that made me more willing to take suggestions because I knew my will was not the way to go about it, Mm -hmm. you know? So very early on, I could say no, but right around six to seven weeks, it was like, yeah, okay. Suggestions are the things that helped everybody else get sober and, and, you know, living a life of recovery. I think I can do that too. Basically, I just had to get out of my own way. And you said that was how far in? Probably six to seven weeks. So about three weeks into IOP. Nice. Mm. Because I started getting very angry at at going to groups. I started getting very like, uh, (laughs) this is not what I want to do. I don't want to do this anymore. You know, and and it wasn't like, I don't want to do this anymore and I want to continue to use. It was, I don't want to do all of these things that are keeping me sober. Why can't I just be sober and change my life? Why can't I just be sober? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And and it was like, well, that's just because that's not how it works. I wasn't working the plan. Right. Like you say, you know, I wasn't, I was working my own, what I thought was going to, you know, be able to quote unquote cure me, but it wasn't sustainable. And I wasn't, I wasn't happy. You know, I always say to clients, like I, I had plateaued that pink cloud gone. It dissipated. I was, I fell right on my butt. And when I finally decided to take that suggestion, that's when I kind of, I got lifted again, you know? And that was through being open-minded to see, to see, you know, and start seeing God speak through other people. Mm-hmm. And it didn't start off as God seeing, as, as me seeing God speak through other people. I just saw, I just saw, or maybe it was, that's just not how I saw it. It was me, like I said earlier, knowing that I'm not alone. And if this can work for anybody else, or this can work for other people, why can't it work for me? And that made me more willing to to give it a shot, Mm -hmm. you know? So that was, I feel like that was God allowing me to be more willing as opposed to willful, Mm -hmm. you know? You bring up a, you know, in your little share there, I think all addicts and alcoholics have that, I want it and I want it now attitude. Oh dude, yeah. Like there's either dual diagnosis of stress, anxiety, depression, bipolar, borderline, ADD, ADHD. There's always something else underlying there. But I always think that the reason that we, one of the reasons, not the reason, but one of the reasons we go back to the bottle or go back to the drug is because we want that satisfaction. We want it right now. Instant gratification. Instant gratification. I wanted five years in like three weeks. Yeah. Oh That's yeah. That's what I wanted. Yeah. That guy's got 30 years. I want 30 years. How do I get 30 years? I can do that. Yeah. One day at a time. Uh-uh. You know? <laughs> and then yeah. you hear those old timers say, you know, I would trade with you in a heartbeat because there's so much you have left to learn. So much to experience sober. Right. And 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 with a new way of looking at life and your relationship with your higher power is going to grow. It's just, and, and I understand that now. I didn't understand that at the beginning. Mm-hmm. For sure. So, are you going to say something? Mm-mm. Okay. No, I was just listening. <laughs> just <laughs> listening. The puppers. To the puppers. Pitter patter. Pitter patter. Pitter patter. Puppy steps. <laughs> so, the difference we kind of touched on at the beginning the difference um, between AA and celebrate recovery is turn our will and lives over in AA and turn our life. Our will life and our wills over, over to, to them. And why is that? Well, because I could only turn my life over one time. There you go. Yeah, once I make the decision to turn my life over to Christ, then there is no, <clears throat> you just don't do it again. Jesus doesn't cancel that contract, that covenant that we made with him. So we only, it's a once in a lifetime thing. Now my will, unfortunately, I have to do that multiple times a day. I could turn my will over a thousand times in a day because maybe I'm being an idiot that day but my life only once. How difficult was it at the beginning to turn your will over every single day? It sucked. It was, it was hard because I like to do things my way. Mm -hmm. I like instant gratification, Mm -hmm. but even outside of that, I just like doing things my way. I'm a control freak. Mm -hmm. So I, I got to have control. If I don't have control. (laughs) Hi guys. Hi, how you doing? And so, um, yeah, it was hard. It was hard to learn. It was hard to take suggestions. It, it was hard to do all those things. This is the easiest program ever, but yet the hardest. Mm. 
It's a simple program for complicated people because we like to complicate the everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's the simplest program. It's the easiest thing you'll ever do in your life. Mm-hmm. You just have to do a lot of self-reflection. And that's what gets to be tough. Yes. Taking an honest look on the inside. But I mean, even before we could do that, we have to do this right here. Step three. Before we could take an honest and moral inventory, because we'll never get honest if we don't have a God. Somebody We've already proven that, that. Yeah. Yeah. That word really messes up the four step. Take an honest. Mm-hmm. Well, if I, if I don't have a higher power, I'm not going to get honest anyway. <laughs> I'm going to give yeah. you what I want to give you, not what needs to be given. That's it. And I've done that. Yeah. I mean, I, cause yeah, I, I went through the steps with a spot. I was never honest. I, that's, that's, let's be honest. I wasn't honest. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. so, to be honest, I wasn't honest. <laughs> let's just be real. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. It's like, I told them just enough and to, to think that, Oh, that's all I have to do. And turns out I, I was wrong. And, you know, I, I like to go to bed every night, try to go to bed every night. And it's like, when I'm wrong, promptly admit it, right? Which is further down the steps. Um, but it's kind of like, okay, did I turn my, what can I do different tomorrow that I, I didn't do today? You know, was I quick to anger? Was I, um, was I trusting that God was actually going to take care of that? Or was I trying to pull it? pull it back and do it myself. Cause when I get angry and discontent, it's because I find something unacceptable to me. Mm-hmm. And so when I'm unacceptable to me, it's because I'm trying to control it instead of saying, you know what, this is the way God wants it to be at this time. God created you to be who you are and your actions are your actions. God has a plan for us, but we get to make the choices mm-hmm. in life. Free will. Yeah. It's called free will. Yeah. Actually, it's funny you guys say that because I have something right here. What is the difference between will and self-will? So free will is our ability to freely choose between good and evil. Self-will is that which we choose and what we choose are two different things. No. Self-pleasing. And we talk, I mean, and I, I think we can bring this up now, like willingness versus willfulness. Willingness is to learn. Willfulness is I'm going to impose what I want on everything else. Pose my will on you. Posing my will onto you as opposed to being willing to accept what you are bringing. Mm. Willingness is a pain. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Nothing's easy. Nothing easy is ever worth it, though. Mm. No. I think with willingness comes some humidi- humidity. Humidity? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I have Call to. back. Hi, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you, brother. Humidity. <laughs> humidity. <laughs> yeah, but it does take, it, it, it takes a, 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 a it takes humility to be willing to admit that's what it is. I, I, I have to admit that I have a problem. I have to admit I'm wrong. I have to admit that I'm wrong. I have to admit that, that there is a better, easy, not a better, easier, but a better way to live than the way I was living. That your ideas actually might work if I just allow myself to listen to you. We yeah. give suggestions, they make decisions, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's all we do. And somebody gave us suggestions and we decided to make the right choice, I would say, in, 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 in pursuing recovery, pursuing our faith in God, uh, sharing that with others. Uh, we're not perfect. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trade my worst day Sober for my best day drunk. Yeah. I would wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. I have had some worse days sober too. Like really bad days sober. Mm-hmm. But nothing compares to being able to work through it sober. Nothing compares. I don't know what the thing is. You're going to work through it. But that's because it. you're sober. Exactly. The other way, you just ignore it and try to stick it somewhere and not <gasps> solve the problem, not come with a solution. And when you're sober, you get to the solution. That's where I started off with my soul. It was, it was, I never would have had the opportunity to work through these things with the men in my life had I remained using or drinking. I would have just pushed it off and said, essentially, F you, you know, no, I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to do what I, what I'm going to do. Everything is okay. 
when in reality, every th- everybody on the outside, like we talked about, everybody else sees it, but my own willfulness would not allow me to see it, mm-hmm. you know? And that's what, that's humility and, it, and it's finest. That's admitting I was wrong. I'm going to work through it, but I'm going to need guidance as well. And without a higher power, where would you have been in that conversation? Oh, uh, I, 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 I would have left <laughs> tackled. You would have, yeah, you, no, I would exactly. Cause I even said at one point I wanted to leave and you're like, you would have tried to leave. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, never I have, goes, I have it never two, goes well. I have three large men <laughs> who would have dragged me down, <laughs> sit in the chair and like it or don't like it, but, but I mean, you're going to sit through it. the chair. Yeah. Without a higher, higher power that would not have been received. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even have been possible. That's not even received. I wouldn't have listened. It would not have been possible. So, yeah, I mean, without that, without the higher power, I mean, everything for your recovery stalls right here. And I can't really say stall because it's more of a pendulum. You're either moving forward or you're moving backward. And if you're not moving forward through the third step, you know, and doing something with it, then you're going backwards. And it won't be long before you put the drink or the drug in your hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because your behaviors are going to show us that you're using even if you're not. The step three prayer of Alcoholics Anonymous, God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. Ooh, that's a tough ending. Always. I know. Always. Let it go. Just sometimes. <laughs> Let it go. Let it go. Sorry. Hey, hand me that book right beside you. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're very welcome. Did you say something, Mike? I think he was just trying to sing. Oh, was he? I was thinking of a lot of songs in this one, like like Limp Biscuit. It's my way, my way. <laughs> and then you said yeah. no, nothing compares. And I was like, nothing compares, compares to you. Thanks, Sinead. <laughs> you kind of got the Sinead thing we going on with that. We, we just lost some people. We did. <laughs> it's okay. They'll be back. Sinead O'Connor, Limp Biscuit. you know, little Jesus Loves Me in there too. Mm-hmm. Preschool, Bible camp. I never went, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <clears throat> My family didn't push that on us. So, I, I mean, we went to we went to church for a funeral here and there, maybe a wedding. Hopefully it wasn't a Catholic wedding. <laughs> when you don't they were that. long and up and down, up and down. <laughs> so what you got? Principle three prayer instead of a step three prayer. Okay. We do principles and steps. So dear God, I have, I've tried to do it all by myself on my own power and I have failed. Today I want to, to turn my life over to you. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. You are the one and only higher power. I ask that you help me start to think less about me and my will. I want to daily turn my will over to you to daily seek your direction and wisdom for my life. Please continue to help me overcome my hurts, habits, and hangups. And may that very victory over them help others as they see your power at work changing my life. Help me to do your will always in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So they say the same thing, but just a little different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These programs are identical. Mm -hmm. We just got to put Jesus in ours is all. Mm -hmm. And that's why through the steps, you see one difference, life and will, where it goes in order. But otherwise, it's still a we program. It's a we program. There's no I and we. Nope. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lead not lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. His will, not mine. That's a tough one. It is. I think Jesus said that right before they took him. When he was praying, your will, take this cup from me. But if it's your will, I'll stay here and do it. I think he said it just like that, too. <laughs> Yo, pops, I got you. Hey, man, I, I'm I, I'm down here, you know, and I'm doing this, but do I really need to? <laughs> Can't you just <laughs> take this <laughs> stuff from me, <laughs> please? Can there easier be an easier, softer way? Like, yes, yeah. And 
you know, that it, that's a fun scripture to point people to as they're going through this too. You know, mm-hmm. just go read this real quick and, and let me know how bad it is that you have to put down a bottle. You don't have to hang on a cross. It's not, eh, it's not that bad. I promise. <laughs> Second Timothy one verse seven for the spirit of God gave us, does not make us timid, but gives us power, love and self-discipline. And the one thing that I lacked in my life was self-discipline. The one thing I struggle with to this day is self-discipline. Um, my default is ego. My default is uh, somebody else will do it. My default is, you know, uh, I'd rather just sit around and wait instead of mm-hmm. action. And and this is a program of action. You know, it's you're not going to get this uh, vicariously through somebody who's got more sobriety. You're not going to do this just by uh, a hope and a prayer. You need hope and a prayer, but you need to do something about it. And so that's the, that's, if you don't get past this one, like Shane said, you're not going to go on to the next one. So. Yeah. I was just reading action. Oh, <laughs> y'all were you? you guys yeah. Said that? yeah. <clears throat> that's what makes it fun. So. Romans 12, 1, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Mm-hmm. That's it. I mean, the third step, that's all you got to do. Turn your life and your will. Turn your life over to him. And if you need to talk through any of that, reach out to us. That's my favorite conversation. Mm. We'll help you guide, we'll guide you through whatever that may be that's stopping you from, from truly turning it over. We'll talk about why are you so fearful of turning it over? We give you your misery back if you really want it. We promise. Or Jesus could take it. Yes. So either one, yes, I was done. Okay. <laughs> I was waiting. I was, I was going to say something one. else, oh, and I, I decided like, uh, not to. Uh, 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 okay. No, nah, I was going to ask what a process was. Oh you know, gosh, there's action oh, in it. Yes, yes. What's a process? Yeah, because there's action in a process. What is a process? A series of actions or steps taken. The twelve steps. A series of actions or steps taken. So I have to admit that I am powerless. I have to admit that there is a God that I need God and that. I'm going to turn my life over to him. Those are the actions that I need to take just right up front. And then a series of actions or steps. So I'm going to work the 12 steps in order to achieve a particular end. Life healing, life change. Mm. Life change. You know, that's one of those things, like I always say this, I wish I could bottle that up. Like I really do bottle that up and like sell it. Like the feeling of letting go of all of those things that you tried to hold on to for so long. And then by finally just giving them up, giving them to Jesus, giving them to your higher power. And then like that, you're not, because when we, when we try to control all those things, I still felt empty. Yeah. You know, but once I gave those up and I, and I brought Jesus into my life, I felt fulfilled and I felt filled to where I didn't need to try and control all those things, even though I still try to sometimes, I mean, let's be honest, we're all human. We're not infallible, but it was a, it's, it's good to know that like by simply doing those steps, trusting that process, I don't have to feel like I did any, like I used to. And like you said, it's the easiest thing, but it's also the hardest thing. I just have to be willing, not willful. So besides the fear of the unknown, what's the fear that's stopping you from turning your life over to Jesus? Good question. It's a great question. Besides the fear of the unknown. Mm Mm-hmm. What are you afraid of? He's not real. What's going to happen to you? You were nice for a little while. You lived a good life. He's real. I mean, just set out to disprove him. How about that? Listeners, if you're not a believer, set out to disprove Jesus for us. Because everybody that does, it turns into the greatest Christ follower there ever has. Been. <laughs> right. There was this, um, I just read that there was a study just recently done um, through Harvard of all places. Um, pretty credible. Yeah, pretty credible. That's why I think it's cool. So they say at the moment of inception, at the moment of inception, there is an electrical spark and a light that they found. 
Hmm. I wonder why. Yeah. The moment in- of inception. The moment of inception when the, the, the uh, sperm fertilizes the egg. Boom. Inception? I thought it was conception. Conce- conception? conception? The moment of conception. In- it's just the moment of inception. I, again, I didn't go to Harvard. Okay. <laughs> so the moment of Let's get all this right, y'all. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just a moment of inception. It's from Harvard, not from me, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, yeah. So the moment of conception, there's an electrical. Yeah. And it's. it's That's incredible. Yeah. Because in, when I think of inception, I think of that movie, like inception of a thought, like the moment of a, like even like a light bulb, you know, that. Yeah. That understanding or that. Oh. That's how you got it confused. Yeah. yeah. Light bulb. I mean, the same thing. Yeah. yeah. But what, 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 that's, that's amazing. And this is another thing too. And I tell the guys this all the time. If you're sitting here, that means you have a chance. Oh yeah. Like that means whatever's tried to kill you has a, hasn't won. Right. That means you're cognitive enough to know right from wrong more than likely. And you, you want to change your way of living and you just don't know how to get there. But good news is somebody else has been there. The chances of being born are one in 400 trillion. Mm-hmm. Just the chances of being born are one in 400 trillion. I still want to know where those stats come from. I, I don't know how they figure it out. I'm sure it's another study out of Harvard. Again, Probably, probably Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one was Yale. Yeah. <laughs> was Yale. Uh, either or. <laughs> Bigger brains than us. That's yeah. For sure. and so it's to me, it's like, that's just crazy. So the fact that you're here is a miracle in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I think of that figure, I'm like. But I'm the I, I don't have the rule. Yeah. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> There's that willfulness. <laughs> on it. It's, you know, and, and to say, just to say that you do have a chance again is, is an amazing feeling because it's like that, that chance of, and I don't want to call it like redemption or anything like that, but that chance of uh, like a, a fulfilled life, you know, not hopeless anymore or helpless, mm-hmm. but just a chance to, to get recovery, to, to turn your will in your life or your life and your will, whichever it may be having that chance, even understanding the fact that you might have a chance is so much more hopeful than I don't have anything, you know, and I, that is so beautiful to me. I like to think of it as, as going back to the guy in the flood. This is your fire department. This is your boat. This is your helicopter. It's so <laughs> choose one. I don't care. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't care how, how low you are in that hole or how high you up are on that roof. Right. Yeah. But this is your opportunity. This is God's way of saying, look, man, come listen, listen to what these guys have, guys or gals have to say. Yeah. There's another lifeline for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and some, I just thought about in the secular world, wills, your life and your, uh, your wills and your lives. Where did yours start? Yours started with the group. And then kept growing. So you actually had to turn your life over a few different times. It makes sense because your idea of a higher power changed and grew. Yeah. Big time. And now you only have to do it that one time. Yep. Life. Once you, once you make the decision to give it to Jesus, it's no longer wills and lives. It becomes life and will Mm -hmm. because you've already done it. But in the secular world, it it does make sense that if you're going to start with group of drunks, I like that one. I, I heard a, Good orderly good direction, order direction plenty of mm-hmm. times, yeah. but never heard a group of drunks. So yeah. I like that. If you were going to do group of drunks or nature or whatever it may be, and you start there, it manifests. You're going to have to, you're going to have to do that quite, a, quite often until you yeah. finally get to the one and only. I think the cool thing is like, it started off very, very broad, you know, because I didn't have an understanding. I, I had no idea of what an understanding of Jesus Christ or a higher power may be. And the further I got into recovery, it started getting smaller and smaller and smaller to where now it's. I know what my higher power is. It is Jesus Christ, right? So you can start as wide as you want. More power to you. Make it as wide as you would like to be. But remain open-minded to where it's might get smaller and smaller and smaller, you know? And what you just said there, Mike, is, is, you're, is you're growing closer to, to Jesus, to God. Holy Spirit, you're finding out that that, that road is narrow and that gate is narrow. Hmm. You know, it's as narrow as the gate, narrow as the road that leads to me. Broad is that highway, though, that leads to. We were on that broad highway for a while. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was in the fast lane going, or the, the Shane lane going 400 miles I'm an hour. On a <laughs> well, got ACDC, Sinead O'Connor, Olympus. Got everything. <laughs> yeah. I know none of it. 
You know ACDC. Because the Bible told me so. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, all right. <laughs> that turned out well. I love it. <laughs> Any closing remarks? It is well with my soul. Yeah, I'm, I don't think uh, we're going to be getting any record deals anytime soon. That's okay. I don't know about that. That's okay. Look, if it's worked for millions upon millions upon millions of people, the chances are it'll probably work for you. Yeah. I, I don't know why, but I don't think you're the anomaly. I know you may think so, but I think if it worked for the millions that it's already worked for, I, I, I don't know what that number would be by now. Is it finally in the billions? I, I mean, I, I, it's high, high millions. We know that for sure. I mean, yeah, yeah. this program has changed lives all over the world and, and millions upon millions of people. Um, Celebrate Recovery did stats quite a few years ago and it, they did how many sets of step study books they've, they've really sold. Mm -hmm. And that's how many times people have been through the steps and they just counted the one because I mean, think about it. I've been through the steps. How many ever times I just use the same books. I don't buy new ones. Mm -hmm. I write in a notebook. And so they were like millions of lives changed through this program, which is true. But now if you add all these different programs up, how many millions or billions of people has it worked for? Yeah. How far has that ripple effect really gone? And you're going to tell me you're the one person it won't work for? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's really funny. It's like, yeah, it wasn't for me. What do, you, what do you mean? There's your willfulness right there. Yeah. It didn't work for you. Hmm. Maybe you didn't work for it. <laughs> exactly. You didn't work. <laughs> right. You didn't work for it. Because if you would have done anything that you were told or, or that was suggested to mm -hmm. you, I promise you, you'd be sitting there saying the same thing. You'd want to snow globe somebody. Yep. Absolutely. I think we need a snow globe. We, do. we should. We do. We can, we, can super, it up. we can superimpose one on my head and I'll just shake it. Just hold it up each time. This is what we want to do to you. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to leave with John 14, uh, 27 through 29. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you. I am going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really loved me, you would be happy that I'm going to the Father, who is greater than I am. I have told you these things before they happen, so that when they do happen, you will believe. And I, I love what Jesus says there, and he, this is where he's promising the Holy Spirit. Um, but he's like, uh, you would be happy that I'm going to the Father, who is greater than I am. This is Jesus, right? Who is one with the Father and the Son, you know? And it's like, he's saying, he is greater than me. Jesus, who performed all these miracles, who is God's son, who is the right hand of God, mm -hmm. and still calls him greater than him. So we have to have somebody greater than us. He was pretty good at humility. He was all right. Yeah. 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 Shane, what you got? I got a blank stare. Okay. No, I just always go to Mike. Okay. okay. He's trying to take my job today. Who? <laughs> Him? This fool, he open and he thinks he's, he's going to Yeah, yeah. It's Amy's yeah. birthday. Just like, I'm Give him something. Here. It's all I got. It's, all. <laughs> it's Amy's birthday. It's not your birthday. Right. On your birthday, we may do it. Uh, no, in, uh, in closing, um, you know, the best thing that I ever did was remain, be, you know, teachable and remain teachable and remain open-minded. Um, yes, I got in my own way sometimes, but more times than not, I relied on the people around me to, um, to kind of, check my ego and check my willfulness. And, and I continue to do that today. And, uh, it's, it, it's truly a, it, it's a blessing to have you guys in my life. And I, and I'm, I'm so grateful to have you guys. Um, and I look forward to see where this continues to go because the only way is up. So eventually the only way is up. <laughs> so if we're going to talk principle three or step three, we got to do a little Romans 10, nine. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The only way is through Jesus. And it um, starts here with a simple confession. If you believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, right? Mm -hmm. That's with your mouth. So with that, man, it's going to be a fun month talking step three. Mm -hmm. Yes, it will. I mean, we can't go any further until now, so get unstuck. Quit going backwards, start going forward. And Unstuck yourself. Unstuck yourself.
Or we'll stick you. One of the best ways you can do that is by journaling. And we want to say thank you to Tactile Turn for being our sponsor. We also wish you guys would please like, share, subscribe. We are on all podcast platforms. You got a little little blade over there. We got the blades. I'm going to unstick them. Yeah. I'm going to stick them. Uh, Stick them. I'm going to stick them so they can get get unstuck. Yeah. (laughs) But we appreciate you guys all for listening. Got him. Got yeah, it. we do. God bless you guys. We'll <laughs> see you soon. Or should I say from everybody at the Wakens, even Derek from everybody. Even Derek. At the yes. Miss you, buddy. Sober. Be back yeah. soon. Yeah. Love you guys. God bless. Peace. Later. <laughs>